Got this device here. I think some of you are familiar with it. Ever know what this is called? Right. Newton's crater. Maybe some of you are familiar with it. Spencer made a huge one of these on iCarly with the bowling balls going back and forth. Okay, so what we have here are five metal spheres attached by very, very thin threads, which we call monofilaments. And every single time I release one to swing, one comes out the other side. So one goes in, one comes out. However, there are other things you can do. Two go in, two come out. Three go in, three come out. Four go in, four come out. But what if it didn't happen? That'd be pretty crazy, right? Okay, obviously that's a bit of a trivial idea here. But it happens every single time. Every single time, one sphere comes in, one sphere goes out the other side. So the question is, how do we use our physics to explain this? Okay, so there's two different conservation laws at play here. One is conservation of momentum. Of course, that's why we're doing it during this topic. So, I let this sphere go. It comes in with a certain amount of momentum because of its mass and velocity. Now, the three spheres in the middle are constrained. They can't move. But the momentum has to be conserved. So the momentum goes all the way through to the one on the end, and it pops off with the same momentum this one had coming in every single time. But there's also conservation of energy, right? I store gravitational potential energy in the mass sphere, in the sphere Earth system by lifting it up against gravity, and when I let it go, that gravitational potential energy becomes kinetic energy. The three spheres in the middle, of course, are constrained to move, they can't move, and the energy goes all the way through to the other side, and this one should come off with the same energy on the other side. Now, of course, it's not perfect. You can see over time, the system does slow down. So what sort of collision are we looking at here? Well, it's pretty close to being elastic. There's a lot of conservation happening here, but of course, there's some energy being lost. So it's got to be what sort of collision? Right, it's got to be some sort of inelastic collision. So the question is, where's the energy go? Well, the spheres do push on the air, so there's air resistance at play, a non sort of force taking energy out of the system. And, of course, there's a little bit of friction where the strings are touching the support, so they rub against each other, and it's got some non-conservative force taking some energy out of the system. But, of course, there's somewhere, I think it's a little more obvious, where energy is being lost. You can hear it. Every single time they hit, sound is being produced. Sound is energy. And so, little by little, the energy is being removed from the system. Now, here we should be able to prove that there's conservation of energy couple of ways we can look at that. One is this. So let's take one sphere from each side. Now it's rather tough to tell this conservation of energy here, so let me try that a little bit differently. Watch carefully. I'm going to take this mass and start from up high, and this one start from down low. Now watch carefully. Did you catch that? Right? You should be able to see this one starts up high, and so the first time this one comes off, it goes high. This one starts off low, and so you see the first one, the first time this bumps out, it also goes low. So watch real carefully here. So even though it's tough to tell, there really is energy being exchanged back and forth, back and forth, every single time. 